What's up gamers? I'm your host Cobra and this is the Free Roll. Today I've got tips and tricks on how to play Everseed's gameplay demo. So as you can see, I am finally into my new studio, although it is barely set up and I clearly have no decorations or anything. My guitar's not even unwrapped yet, but I wanted to make sure that we got this video out for you guys right away because the Everseed gameplay demos are always a surprise. At least this is the third time where they have uh, dropped the demo without any real forewarning and uh, it won't last for very, very long. So. I wanted to get this out quickly to help some of the players who are maybe struggling to progress a little bit because as far as gameplay demos go, uh, this one is actually a bit of a challenge and uh, the Proving Grounds level that was released in the second demo took me several tries to complete. Uh, this time I have a much better understanding of the game and uh, the two new levels, while longer and uh, difficult, were able to be passed on my first try. So we're going to share some of the tips and tricks that I have uh, developed by experimenting and enjoying this game so far. And before we jump into the tips and tricks, do me a quick favor and double check that you've hit that like and subscribe button below. Now the first tip is relatively simple and straightforward. It is to clear the blight first on any wave where you're going to clear the blight at all. And the reason why this is is because you want to have all of your options available to you when you're making all of the rest of your choices in terms of where to plant a basic plant or to upgrade a basic plant to a battle plant. You also want to clear the blight on your first few rounds. Uh, the way that I like to do it is uh, start each of my first two and possibly three rounds or waves uh, by clearing the blight. This generally gets rid of enough of it for me to uh, operate the rest of the round. Uh, but again, that involves a little bit of RNG and because you don't know which tiles are gonna be revealed each time, uh, it's a bit of a surprise. So you want to do this early and often. Now, new in-game play demo three is a second companion option for you to choose. Uh, previously, you were only able to select the Corgi, which was a, certainly a helpful companion, but new this time around is the Honey Bear, and I love the Honey Bear. Uh, this was probably my favorite uh, update so far, and uh, it's because the Honey Bear fits my playstyle much, much better. Uh, different from the Corgi, the Honey Bear will surround himself with honey, and uh, that makes the tile sticky and slows down opponents. He also has a much stronger attack, and his active ability it gives a shield uh, to your goalpost uh, that you're defending, and while the shield is relatively limited, it can certainly come in handy in a pinch if you make a mistake and have several bugs attacking all at once. The honey bear is gonna also combo very nicely with the dark creeper, uh, which we'll talk about when I get to the combo section. Understand your different battle plant options. Now there's a variety that you get to choose from uh, when you're setting your strategy, and I like to look at them in two different groups, DPS or damage per second, and utility battle plans. The utility battle plans are the ones that offer up some type of a debuff or bonus that makes it a little bit easier and helps uh, your plants do more damage. DPS battle plans, on the other hand, are the actual plants that are doing the majority of the damage. In early waves, you're going to want to focus more on the DPS plants because you're not going to have enough energy to get both utility and DPS onto the field while clearing the blight in your first round. Uh, so you start out with the DPS and then in the second and third rounds, typically look to add in the key utility. The one exception that I make there is the Tema Herb. The Tema Herb is a rather unexciting battle plant. It upgrades your basic plant, uh, but makes it so that it's actually a little bit less effective, but its passive ability gives you one extra energy every subsequent round, and that is a huge boost, especially if you can get the Tema Herb planted early in the round. This is even more true when you're into the later stages 
where there are six or seven or even more waves of bugs to clear uh, because the Tema plant's not going to go away, so you're going to have that bonus energy for multiple rounds. And if it's a seven wave round, for example, then you get the Tema herb out on the first wave and you end up with an extra energy in six more rounds as well. That is a lot. The next tip is to leverage your environment. In this example here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of rocks and they almost split the screen in half. Because of that, it's really, really easy to create a choke point. In fact, in this first wave, I can simply move my companion and there you go, I have a choke point. And because most of the spawns are on the left side and the goal we're protecting is on the right side, that means that the majority of the bugs are gonna have to pass right through this choke point no matter where they're coming from. That means I can focus my battle plants in that area and get a lot of damage off on everything that goes through that choke point. This isn't going to always be so simple, but leverage the environment around you, especially as you clear the blight and reveal more. In fact, create a choke point is a strategy that I use all the time, and that's our next tip. As you can see in this example, I have created a funnel where all of the bugs, no matter where they're spawning from, eventually have to filter through this murderous row of battle plants. And uh, as you can see, uh, I've done such an effective job here that the majority of them don't make it more than halfway through before they are finished. Another relatively simple tip that wasn't terribly obvious to me right away is to be very strategic with where you put your water. Now, watering costs two energy, so you have to be a little bit more careful about where you put it, but it is going to upgrade your battle plans for the next two rounds. But more powerful than that, it's not just going to water a single tile. It's going to water the tile that you select and then all of the adjacent tiles next to it as well. So this means if you're smart about where you put it, you should be able to upgrade two, three, or even more battle plants with a single watering, and that will really increase the amount of damage that you're putting out and the effectiveness of your battle plants a lot quicker. This also means that you want to put your battle plants relatively close together, if not right next to each other, so that it is easy to water multiple at a single time. And our final tip for today is to create combos with your battle plants. Now, full disclosure, you don't always have to use a battle plan for the combo. Your companion can serve very nicely uh, in a combo, and so can the environment from time to time if you've got uh, the right kind of tile in the right position. One of my favorite combos is to put a high damage battle plant uh, like the Blastworth and the Dark Grabber right next to each other. Now, you want to be very careful about how you position the Dark Grabber, and you want to upgrade it twice so that its range is extended. Uh, but once that has happened, if you can force the bugs to go through the Dark Grabber's affected area, uh, and then immediately after have a high damage battle plant hitting it, it's going to double the amount of damage that it does, and it is a really effective combo. In fact, if you can get a dark grabber upgraded and placed somewhere near the center so that you're covering a lot of tiles and then fill those tiles up with lots of damage, it's going to be very difficult for bugs of any type to get through that. Another really smart strategy is to use uh, any utility that will slow down the opponents and put it next to your high damage and slow attacking battle plants. Uh, there's a uh, Muscle Thorn, I think it's called, uh, but he does a really big attack, but he's slow. Uh, so a lot of the bugs uh, come out fast, and he only has time to get off an attack on, say, one out of a group of three, and that's not super effective. But if you can put the Honey Bear, bear next to it, or uh, the Sap uh, pl battle plant next to it to slow them down, then you have a much better chance to hit multiple enemies with that big attack. In fact, you can combo all of these things together. Slow them down with your honey bear, uh, right? 
after they enter the Dark Grabber's effective area, and then the very next tile should be lots of damage. In fact, if you can have the next few tiles uh, dealing out heavy damage, almost nothing is going to survive that combination, at least that they've shown us so far. And that wraps up today's edition of the free roll. We hope you found this fun and informative. And if you did, consider giving us a follow on Twitter. That's where I love to engage with the Web3 gaming community and answer all your questions. Also, double check for me that you've hit that like and subscribe button below. It really helps to support the channel.